Hey everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and it is time for our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 348, 48. <laughs> I hope everybody is doing well today. It's slightly overcast and kind of drizzly out here in sunny California, but today is a glorious day. It truly is. Yesterday I closed down to the few of us who are here just because there was protests going to be here in Santa Clarita and we're all aware of the protests that are going on right now. And you just never know what those protests are gonna bring. Most people are here to, um, to express what they need to say in a respectful way. They are peaceful protesters. And, but then you see on TV all of those things that have happened and the stores that have been looted that had nothing to do with the peaceful protesters at all. And yet, that's what dominated the, the, the TV, which was awful, the news. So yesterday, knowing that we were gonna have protests up here and knowing that the National Guard was coming into Santa Clarita, I mean, I don't know that when we've had the National Guard here in Santa Clarita, but we did yesterday. I shut down just to be sure that everything was gonna be okay. I came in and SMS girl Elena came in for a little while with me and thankfully they stayed peaceful. And I, I can't tell you, how thrilled I was and how appreciative I was because I absolutely believe in the right to say what you need to say. Absolutely. But it was so sad that those words, whichever words you want, you know, whatever side you're on, who, whatever you believe, those words were being drowned out by all of the looting that was happening. So, Yesterday was a good day. I think our peaceful protesters came to Santa Clarita. There was a few little skirmishes, but certainly nothing like what they, they were showing on TV. And I have to tell you, I was watching the news. I try not to watch the news too much, but I was watching the news the other day and they showed, uh, I was talking to a customer on the phone today about this. They showed a gentleman, he was a looter who the day before had broken into a store, it looked like a clothing store, and they just decimated it. This was in Los Angeles, I think. They just decimated it, or maybe Pasadena, uh, not Pasadena, Fairfax, just Melrose, maybe it was Melrose. Anyway, they decimated his clothing store. And so the next day, they were, you know, the news crews were back on that street and they showed the owner of that store and he looked like a fine young man. He looked like like a, 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 a like me, like you, like everybody, just a business owner. He's not a national chain. He's not even a franchise. He's just a little clothing store. And they showed a, a gentleman who the day before had looted his store with clothes, all the clothes in his hands. He walked, he, he found, he walked back to the store and apologized to the store owner and gave them back. And, you know, I think people just get caught up in the moment, not that it's an excuse, but, but he gave them back and he apologized. And I know that that can't replace what that store owner lost. I get it. It is heart wrenching when you're a mom and pop and you are worried about your business and it is out of your control because most store owners are A-type personalities and we live in our control. <laughs> but to see that this person who did this looting had gone and, and, and over the night realized what he did was wrong and then take responsibility for being wrong and having the gumption to go up to the store owner and apologize. You know, that was, that was a good piece of, that was a good thing to see on TV, that we can make mistakes. We can, we do, we're supposed to make mistakes, but then we can learn from them and we can try and do better. And like I said, I know that that store owner will never be quite whole again, but it had to mean something to him to have somebody say they're sorry. Those are very powerful words that can do so much healing. So 
anyway, I am glad that my store is just fine. And I'm glad that we're slowly bringing people back to work two by two. <laughs> we're a two by two here. We want to keep people healthy and safe. So we are not just opening up the floodgates and saying, okay, everybody come back to work. Come on, come back to work. It's been a slow progression of getting people back in and it will continue. We have just started. So over the next month or so, we'll be bringing more and more people back in until we're back up and running full speed ahead. Where we are on shipping, super quick, I want to let you know, find it trading, the dot and dues. They're, they're almost all out. Several of you have already started to receive information or updates or your packages with the calendars and the calendar um, chipboards. And we're about halfway through pulling that. And then we are starting to pull also the Spellbinders kits, those fabulous two kits that we had. So hang tight. We're getting there. We're still shipping as much as we possibly can every single day. And we so appreciate your understanding. Our goal is to be back to normal shipping time frame by August. Fingers crossed. We're still not there yet. We still have a ways to go, but, uh, but we're, gonna, we're just gonna do our best. Now, today, what today's YouTube is all about, it came to me at three o'clock in the morning. I don't know why, I, I don't sleep anymore, not too much. My brain has too much going on, always. I'm always thinking about something, and Mary Lynn, SMS girl Mary Lynn's like, I'm so glad I don't live in your head. <laughs> because I, I multitask and I'm thinking about 20 different things all at the same time. And so this came to me at three o'clock in the morning. And when I showed the SMS girls, because Claire and Elena and Doris, and they've all been coming in, Belinda, they've been coming in, you know, once a week or so, and I'm showing them what the, what we're doing. And then they go home and make samples and they're like, really, really, really? And I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> Like, I mean, at first it was like, what? I'm like, wait, let me show you. And it's like, really? And then when it was all done, they're like, oh, really? And I'm like, uh -huh. <laughs> now I may not be the only one who thought of this. I'm sure I'm not the only one who thought of this. So perhaps you've seen it before. I don't know, but perhaps you haven't. So I'm excited to bring it to you because I, I hadn't really ever done this before. And I thought that it was kind of cool and makes use of product you may already own, which is very important. Now we've got, what do we have? I have Stampendous. I have, I have one new Simply Defined die. This is not a Simply Defined release, but I needed one die. I wanted one die to make this, to, to kind of tie this all together. So I manufactured it. <laughs> it's one die. And, uh, and I'm sure that there'll be a few more coming down the line under the brand, which is um, Concentric Crafting. It's simply defined Concentric Crafting. Say that three times fast. But I've got, I've got that for you. I've got Stampendous for you. I've got some new storage for you that is so super cute and easy. I'm not supposed to show it to you yet, but there are the little, there are the little shaker toppers from last week. Oh, I wish I had had these last week, but that's okay. I've got them now. And then we've got winner, winner, chicken dinner to talk about. So let's do that right now. This was from 347, which was the shaker cards and the little shaker toppings. So cute. And you guys love the shaker cards. And I talked to Susan at Clear Scraps and she's like, oh, and I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> Job well done, Susan. You made a great product, you and your husband, the grandma and grandpa shop, not the mom and pop shop. They're a grandma, grandpa shop. You guys did a great job making great product. And so when you make something that's affordable, that's that's easy to use and and that is relatable to people, well, that's what happens, Susan. They like it. <laughs> she was so excited. <laughs> so this was from that YouTube with the shaker cards and the tags and the cosmic shimmer, the opal polish and the eye zinc. And these two people have won a $25 gift card. There's nothing to be done. You don't have to email me. You don't have to claim your prize. I've already put your $25 in your online account, assuming you have one. If you do not have one, you need to set one up so I can put it in your account 
okay? Now to be a winner winner chicken dinner, we pick two people every single week. You just have to leave a comment on this YouTube, which means you have to have a username and login for YouTube and then subscribe to our channel. So my, my, my children would really like me to get to 100,000 subscribers. They follow, they, they check how many new subscribers I have and we're trying to get to 100,000, so who knows? <laughs> I told him, I'm not Selena Gomez with a Coke bottle in my hand, you know? <laughs> I'm a mom <laughs> and a mom and pop shop owner. I'm happy. <laughs> They're like, but mom, I said, I'm trying. So our winner winners who have won that $25 gift card to spend on anything to make their heart happy is Diane. Diane Simpkins, is this you? Hello, Diane. Are you going, no wait yes me really yes it's you hello well done diane but you're not alone we always give two prizes away our second person who's also won a 25 dollars gift card is kathy with a k and a y not a c and an ie <laughs> kathy van stee hello kathy van stee is that you because if it is you know what you are Oh, you and Diane, you're a winner, chicken dinner, you're a winner, chicken dinner, wahoo, cut you for you. Congratulations, girls, that $25 is there for you to spend on something that maybe you just couldn't pull the trigger to do. You just couldn't justify it. You wanted it, but you didn't need it. Well, now you can have it, hopefully. So go online and spend your money, and again, congratulations. And for the rest of you, keep on posting. You just never know when you're gonna be a winner, winner, chicken dinner here at Scrapbooking Made Simple. And just know the live chat does not count. So you have to leave a comment. And the comments is, if you're watching me, somewhere underneath me, <laughs> there's a place to leave a comment, all right? <laughs> That's also a place where the link is so you can get to the YouTube yummy sale. Okay, so I think we're gonna get started for today. I'm gonna tilt down, like I said, I've got Stampendous. I have got a new Simply Defined die, part of my new Concentric Crafting collection, which right now just compiles one die, there's just one. <laughs> but I think you're gonna like what I have to show you, and if you've already seen it, well, thank you for staying with me anyway. And if you haven't, maybe this is a way to utilize some product you already own. Okay, I'm gonna tilt on down and we're gonna get started for today. Bye. Down we go. And let's zoom on in. The postman came today, Jojo. He is our post office guy. He's our mail guy, our mail deliverer. And he walked in and I had, I had my big gallon, literally gallon sized jugs of, <laughs> of hand sanitizer. I mean, they're really, they're, they're gallon size. And he's like, oh, and I said, I said, where did you get this from? And I told him and he said, that is the most hand sanitizer I've ever seen. I, and he had this little bottle and it was half empty. And I said, well, open it up and fill up. You know, you can, when you come in here, he uses the bathroom, he feeds the fish, he gets something to drink, and now he'll restock on his hand sanitizer. <laughs> okay, here is a sample that we have made using my new concentric crafting dies. Can you see the squares? and the technique I want to show you today. So the squares are my die and the color of the squares is what I want to do today. Cute sample, huh? All right, I'm going to put that over to the side and I'll show it again to you later. But first off, let's start with my dies. Simply define concentric crafting. That's what it's called. You got four of the same size squares, four of the same size circles, and then you've got these three dies here, which look like rectangles, but they are not. Now, I gave you four because that way you could cut four pieces or four different uh, squares at the exact same time as opposed to doing one after the other after the other, and they do nest into each other, same here, but these were um, these were measured to be exact so that you can go four down or three across 
and you will have a perfect A2 size card. You could do four down and three across of the circles and fill the entire A2 size card. These were meant, you can do bigger than that, but they were meant to go with an A2 size card or, or larger. So on the back, we've kind of given you an idea of what can be what can be done and all of those would be a2 size cards under concentric crafting now these are a little different than what they look like right now they just look like rectangles but they're not these are strip dies which means that there's a die cut line here and a die cut line here but no line here and no line there that means you could die cut a strip of paper as long as you want. And all three of them are like that. All three of them have a cut line on either side, the top and the bottom, but none on the side. And then these three will layer into each other just like the circles or the squares. They're not difficult dies and they're not even well, I mean, they're not, there's no design to them. They're circles, squares, and strips, but they're very, very, very useful. And they are a size that is perfect for both card maker and scrapbooker and altered art and mixed media because they're not too big, but they're not too small. And again, here they are on the card. So these are called wafer dies and they're super easy to cut. They call them wafer dies because well, they're wafer thin. We call them a, um, an uh, open frame die because you can stick your fingers right through it. If it was a uh, intricate die, it would have lots of detailing and you wouldn't be able to stick your finger through it. But these are open frame dies, which are some of the easiest to cut. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you how to cut them super fast, but I don't wanna take too much time. Um, I gave you lots of the same so that you could cut with one roll multiple things. So if I bring my Sizzix machine over, I've got my Big Shot machine, and I'm going to use my regular multi-purpose platform, whether you have the, the small one, the large one, whether you have the new version, which just comes with a base plate and, and one shim that's not attached. You're going to close everything up and use it together. I've got my, well, I'm going to do my cut plate first. So let's get a bigger, better cut plate so it really looks like we've cut into it. Here's a cut plate. You can see it kind of looks yucky yucky and here's a do not cut plate this one's nice and pretty and shiny so i put my cut plate down first because i'm going to put my paper on top of it and then i'm going to take my dies and i can put my dies wherever i want them And because I have so many of them, I could cut all of my squares if I'm doing something with squares. I could cut them all out at once. Do I want to do another? Okay, no, this one I'll do. I'll do this. And maybe I'll do that and on this one maybe I'll do this and I'll do that and we'll see what happens and maybe on this one I'll do this just to give you an idea of all the different things you could do with them Okay, so I've got all my dies on my multi-purpose platform. I've got my cut plate down, my paper, my dies, and now I'm gonna put my do not cut plate over the top. 
Do not cut plate is nice to have. It's something that you try not to cut into because it keeps your, your uh, surface, gives you one nice smooth flat surface. After a while, your cut pads are going to become warped. That's what happens when you cut into them. This one is warping. I don't know if you can see it, but it's pretty well warped in the center. Pretty good warped in the center. That's going to happen over time. But if you have two plates that are both really warped, you end up trying to cram them in underneath. However, if you keep one plate just as a do not cut plate, just so that you don't ever use it and ever cut into it. It always stays nice and perfect and flat. Can you hear the creaking? It's okay. Little creaks and cracks, that's all right. Let's see how well we did, because these are open frames, so they shouldn't be difficult to cut. I didn't even go backwards. Okay, I'm gonna bring my gotcha tool over. This is a gotcha tool, it's mine. It's called a gotcha tool because when you do this, you gotcha, <laughs> you get it? <laughs> it's just an easy way to store your wafer dies and it will hold a ton of them on there. And like I said, I do just, you saw them all cling. Let me, zoop, zoop. So you wanna pick them up? There you go. You lose something in the trash can, here you go. Now, this was made by Spellbinders for us because it is based off of their main attraction, which is a diamond-shaped tool, which was very difficult for us to, to ship, and the face of it was very small. I had I redesigned this so that the magnet goes all the way, edge to edge, as opposed to just very small, and we it's flat. <laughs> we can ship it so much easier. But my goodness, you can just... It holds a lot of wafer dies. And like I said, if you lose something on the floor of the trash can, you don't have to bend down to pick it up. You just drop that down and zoop, it goes right to it. Now let's see what die cuts we got out of this. And mind you, these are just these are just the squares, and I really haven't even done that much with them. But I mean, I put the square on a di uh, on the diamond pattern there, so you've got a little diamond shape in there. I did a frame. I did another frame. You've got options, and then, like I said, they're concentric. So they will nest right into them, nest right into each other without any problem. And that's true for the squares or the circles. I could have put a circle in here and had a circle opening in a square frame. You, you just, you have a lot of options with the set. It really is easy to use. And like I said, these are not rectangles. These are meant so that you can make a strip as long as you want, and then you can nest the three sizes into each other. Easy, easy to use. So that's a wafer style die going through a Sizzix Big Shot machine. These dies will go through your Cuddle Bug, your Sizzix Big Shot, your Big Kick, your Vagabond, your uh, Sizzix Fabby, your Sizzix Vintage your Sizzix Plus, your Sizzix Pro machine, your Grand Caliber, your Gemini, your Epix uh, Platinum 6, Platinum 8, pretty much any machine you own, these are gonna work with. Okay, let's push those off to the side for now. And let's bring over what I really wanted to show you. <laughs> But I had to show you die cutting first or you wouldn't. Some people have never seen a die cut before. And just in case you haven't, this is a wafer die. And there's these little edges on the die. These little edges, they don't cut. So they're great for kids or seniors or people who are new to crafting because they can't cut you. But with, the, with pressure, that little edge going through that machine is cuts the paper out like butter just like butter. So dyes become a very fun thing to have. <laughs> 
because you can take basic paper and turn it into something spectacular. Now, let's talk. So I was thinking at three o'clock in the morning about embossing powders. Love my embossing powders. They're great, they've been around forever. Um, we tend to sell a lot of Stampendous embossing powder. They make a fabulous embossing powder. They've been around for years. They stand behind their products and they have things that others don't necessarily have. So I pulled a few embossing powders and I was playing with them. And at three o'clock, I, I was at three o'clock in the morning, I woke up and said, well, how would I make an ombre? Let's say you have all these embossing powders that you've bought over the years and you haven't pulled them out or played with them in a little while. How can we make them new again? How can we make them exciting again? And I love ombre. I love color. I love gradation of color. I, when I, when I was a little kid, well, I'm still, a little, well, I still do it now, but um, when I was little, I still do it now. I love lining up all my markers. I love them all lined up by color, starting with the lightest color of a, of a shade, working towards the darkest, and then all, it just makes my heart happy. So, <laughs> don't know why, I love markers, I love pencils, I love them all pretty and organized, and the colors just make my heart happy. So, when I thought about this at three o'clock in the morning, I said, how would we ombre something like this? And then I thought about all the different types of transparent embossing powders that Stampendous has. And I came in the very next morning and I grabbed, I think six or seven different types of transparent embossing powders that Stampendous has because they have a clear, they have a crystal, they have a kaleidoscope, they have, I mean, they, they just, they have stardust. They have all of these unique little embossing powders that kind of look alike, but totally don't look alike. They're, they're white, but that doesn't mean they're the same. This one's kind of got a silvery tinge to it, but it's not, this is Winter Wonderland, but it's not silver at all. And I thought, what if we took and we paired these with an embossing powder and we were using this to dilute the color of the embossing powder to where you would get gradations of color just with one embossing powder. Could we do that? Well, so I came over and I started to play. First thing I did is I grabbed some paper and I am using paper that I can't get anymore. I'm not even using typical white cardstock. I'm using paper that has a white backing to it. Because nobody's gonna see what I taped down. If you've got paper that has got, that's single-sided and has got a white backing to it. This is great for that. Great for that. Then I'm going to take Stacy tape. And this is a one and a half inch Stacy tape. And I'm going to just put some down. One. Two. and three. Pull it up and I'm going to cut away the excess. You probably would not use as much excess as I did, but I've got quite a bit of Stacy tape being that it's well, Stacy tape. <laughs> so I just wanted to make Three strips. Now, what is Stacy tape? It's a double-sided adhesive. So the minute I pull this off, so you can tear it. The minute I pull this off, it's tacky right there. I have to do something with it. I have to put it down onto something. And then when I pull the liner off, it is tacky again. And I have to do something with it. As long as I don't pull that liner piece off, I could leave this forever like this and come back to it at any time. But the minute you pull that liner off, well, it is now sticky and it's very much, it's a very strong tape. <laughs> it is also heat resistant, 
which makes it wonderful for using embossing powders with. So I played around a little bit and I, I, I want it and I'm gonna grab some of these, some of the new storage, love the new storage. And I think I'm just gonna take this one and I'm gonna need to make a little funnel out of something. So let's grab another piece of paper that I'm not caring too much about. And I'll make my own little funnel here. So I started with a like a full color embossing powder and I wanted to do one strip that was just totally the absolute full color, full potency of the embossing powder. So I pulled my strip off and I brought over my little funnel and I'm going to put my embossing powder right on top of it. No Versamark, no Top Boss, nothing like that. Just tape. And the tape, as I said, it's heat resistant. Now you could get in there and kind of schmooze it around a little bit if you wanted to. Make sure you got plenty on there. tap it off. I've got all of this extra. So I'm going to put it back in my jar. I put it right back in my jar. And for now, I'm going to put the lid on. Now I'm going to take my heat tool. And this is not, it is not a blow dryer. No, this is a, a heat tool from Ranger and this gets hotter than a blow dryer. Your blow dryer will not do this and it will not melt your embossing powder. At the same time, this, if you put it on your hair, you're going to singe it. I promise you. So this is a tool for heat embossing and I'm going to take that powder that's on there and I'm going to melt it into a solid. It's very, very cool. So I'm gonna start and I'm just gonna put it on. Now, if you have a cylinder tool, a cylinder tool will work as well. It will heat it much faster and change it much faster, but you also run the risk of burning it much faster. I don't burn anything with my heated tool and you can see how closely I am able to get it to my tape, my embossing powder. With a cylinder tool, one, you would probably be done by now, but two, if you worked it too long, you would burn your embossing powder. Can you burn embossing powder? Yes, you can. Now, as I see it starting to brighten up and turn yellow, that's when I start to move my heat tool. I don't move it until I see it turning. And that's when I start to slowly move it. To do this means you're adding heat, taking heat, adding heat, take. you keep adding heat here, but then you take it away when you move it back and then you put it back. And the minute you take that heat off of there, it starts to cool down. You need to keep that heat on there until it is completely turned and you can see it. Okay. So let me show you. Can you see that gloss? Wow, right? Easy to see. This has turned to a solid. This is still powder. Now, is it dry? Yep, it just takes a few seconds for it to cool down and it is dry. But look at the gloss on there compared to here. This is how I know I haven't added enough heat to this. If you just look at it straight on, you might not see a difference. But the minute you turn it, boy, do you ever. So I know I need to come back and add heat here until that powder melts into a solid. Now this is just plain embossing powder right on top of Stacy tape. Does it have to be Stacy tape? No, but there's only, not every tape is heat resistant. I believe that, I know Sukwang is, 
definitely heat resistant, which would be Scorpel. And I believe Elizabeth Crafts is heat resistant. So if you have double sided tape by either of those companies, you should be good. Do you have to use my tape? No, no, not if you already own something that's going to work. Is my tape a little bit stronger, a little bit longer, and hopefully a little bit less money? Yes, <laughs> but that doesn't make a difference. Don't buy what you already own. Okay, now can you see the whole thing has got a gloss finish to it. We're good. We've got a gloss finish. Now that's just embossing powder all on its own. I didn't do anything to it. And you could stamp on top of it. You can stamp with a Versamark and throw embossing powder down. But I wanted to make this strip because the next thing I want to do is try to make an ombre. Now, I have got these super cute little tools. Look at these little scoops. Are they the cutest things ever? I got. I bought these from US Art Quest. And we're selling five of them. You get five of them. And they're just darling. Where's the little package? We bought them in bulk. They're not going to come fancy packaged, but you're going to get them and they're cute. <laughs> and I just thought that these were awesome. That way you didn't have to go raid 7-Eleven um, uh, <laughs> for these. Although these will come with your embossing kits from Stampendous. But these are just very unique and very easy to use. So I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow. and I'm gonna mix it and I think that's enough I'm not even giving myself a full scoop because I don't want too much left over I really don't well maybe even I take a little bit less because I don't want too much left over and I've put it in there then I have got three options I played with about seven different powders and I found that the winter wonderland that the kaleidoscope and the clear work fabulously so what if i took the clear or let's maybe no yeah let's do the clear and i took a little bit of a scoop of clear and i mixed that with my yellow We'll see if it's light enough. I want to give it a good stir. And let's see what we get. So now I'm going to take off, I'm going to bring my little, my little handmade funnel over. I'm going to take off my second one. And I'm going to dump this over there. See, I don't want too much left over. Come on. Wow, talk about by the hair of my chinny chin chin, right? I have like none left over. Ooh, that's good. Okay, let's see what we get. Let's see what we get. It might be too light. I don't know. Possible. Oh, I'm going to put that little bit back. Just that little bit back in my container. That's what I have left over. And I'm going to heat.
And as it's turning, I can be moving it. Oh, you can see that. Oh, look at how good that is. You can see that. Can you see it turning? Oh, I just lost it. There we go. And you can see it getting shiny up here and it's slowly turning down there. Oh, that was really good. Okay, so let's see what we've got. Okay, so now I've made a lighter shade of yellow. Just by adding clear embossing powder to the full strength of yellow. Can I go even lighter? Maybe. Let's see. Um, here's my yellow. I'm going to add even less. Gonna add oh that's a lot that's very little uh, okay what's the worst can happen right it's just Stacy tape and then let's get the clear and let's add a scoop so now it's even lighter than it was because I keep diluting the color down with the clear what do you think Maybe just a little more clear. I can't tell. Okay, we're just gonna go for it. Just go for it, Stacy. All it is is paper and some Stacy tape. Give it a good mix. So, how many embossing powders do you own where you wish it was just a shade lighter? You wish that you just could just back it up just a little bit. You've got this really vibrant red, but you need something a little softer than that, but you don't want to go out and buy a new red. Well, do you have clear embossing powder? Try and make it into an ombre. Let's push this on and let's see. So I'm going to put it on and I'm going to let the gravity feed do its thing. And I'm just going to tap it all the way down and around. And it looks like I've got good coverage. And this is what I've got left. So I'll put that back in my little jar. And I will save this until the next time I want to pull out that yellow, I've already, it's kind of like a starter. When you make bread, so I've heard, let's be clear, I don't make bread. <laughs> or a soup starter, any kind of starter. Don't they have like a sourdough starter? Or, and you pass it, or friendship bread, and you, you, you start it, and then you take a little bit out, and then you pass it on to somebody else, and they start their bread with it, and they, friendship bread, friendship soup. Yeah, so that's what this is kind of like. It's like a starter where you've got somewhat of a base color. If I wanted to make this, um, I would never make it full strength because full strength I would just put down all by itself. But then I can add a little yellow and a little bit of clear to make my next color and then add a little bit more of the clear to make my final color. And let's see how light I get this. So I'm holding it down, not going back and forth and back and forth. I know it's kind of like paint drying, but that's okay. And I can see it turning and as it's turning, oh, I missed a spot down there, as it's turning, I'm moving it. I got three different yellows out of one. Hello. Hello. <laughs> You're like, yeah, so. <laughs> but wait, there's more. <laughs> I really did this at three o'clock in the morning. Maybe it was 2.45. This is the way my brain sometimes works. I'm like, 
you know we've got embossing powder but I never you know sometimes I want a different color or sometimes sometimes you can only afford one color but you don't want to be stuck with just one when you can have shades so now what am I going to do with this well okay pretty dry I'm going to cut it in half because I want to show you something else with this half I'm going to scoop the little cutest little thing you've ever seen. I'm going to bring it over. I'm going to bring my dies back. Remember, multi-purpose platform, completely closed. If you've got the newer versions, you've got just a long platform with one shim. You're going to put that all on. If you've got the extended multi-purpose, you're going to close it all up. You need to use whatever uh, sandwich it is in your machine for wafer style dies. Now, let's bring this one over here. And this one here. And this one here. And can I get this one on here too? I can. And. Can I do it in the reverse? So if I do that, can I do this there and do a double of that one? <gasps> By George, I can. So this is the benefit of having all, so many of the same die so that you can get the most out of one roll through. Now, let's close it up. Let's send it on through. It's an open frame style die, so I can tell you I'm already crooked. Open frame style die, so you don't have to go back and forth unless you absolutely want to. I am going through embossing powder and tape, so if you're more comfortable, you can absolutely wheel it on rack. You shouldn't have to rotate, and you shouldn't have to use a precision base plate of any kind to make this work. And let's see what I got. Now nobody knows <laughs> that it's striped on the back. Use yucky paper. Don't use your best paper, not for this. No, that you, you pet and you cherish and you ponder how can you cut into it. This easy peasy, no problem. Now I've got all of these shapes in all of these different colors. What can I do with them? Um, let's grab, let's grab some. Let's grab some of my micro dots and let's open them up. Just for convenience, I'm gonna cut that. Micro dots, dots on one side, hundreds of thousands of little tiny dots on one side, nothing on the other. I'm gonna lay all my little pieces, my little squares down. One, two, three, four, five, Six. Give a nice press. And then pull one. There's one. Pull two. There's two. And pull three. There's three. Or I can pull one. There's one. I can pull two. There's two. And I can pull three.
There's three. And just like that, I've made ombre embossing powder. <laughs> Easy peasy and so effective. And again, probably with something you already own. Those of you who have been crafting since the beginning of time, you probably have embossing powders you haven't pulled out in who knows how long. Whoop. Sticking to me. Pull them out and play. Pull them out and play. But play by mixing other things in with them. And this isn't the only thing to mix in. Let's do this again. So I'm gonna put that there for right now. And I'm gonna pull another piece of paper. And I'm gonna use here and we'll go one, two, three. Ooh, am I gonna make it? Nope, I'm not. So I'm gonna put this one aside and use this one later. I'll cut myself a bigger piece. So close. His paper's too small, but I'm not going to get rid of this because this is still good. I'll use this later on. Yeah, I'm not going to get rid of that. Let's just cut ourselves a bigger piece of paper, shall we? Should have plenty there. One. three plenty of room to stretch out peel it right off the non-stick craft mat and cut off my excess alrighty so I said that there were other colors this is winter wonderland it's beautiful. Oh, but remember, I said I was going to show you what else I wanted to do with this. Okay, let me step back before I go forwards. So, can you see how it's got like little, like almost like an orange peel effect to it? Especially this one, kind of an orange peely effect to it. It's textured and you can feel that. You absolutely can feel that. It's bumpy, lumpy, and for certain things that may be fabulous. That might be exactly what you want. But what if it's not? Okay, no problem. You still love the color and you love the look, but you're not crazy about the lumpy bumpies. Okay, I get it. <laughs> I was gonna say, so my back thighs kind of are lumpy bumpy, but let's not talk about that, shall we? <laughs> Did she just say that? Yes, yes, she did. <laughs> it is what it is. Okay, Versamark. Versamark, this is an embossing medium. Take some Versamark. Go right over the top. Because my Versamark got red in it. Sure does. Ooh, my Versamark's got some serious red in it. It's going to be clear. You can't even tell it's on there. But if I take my clear embossing powder again, and I drizzle it over, anywhere that Versamark kissed my paper, it's going to allow more clear to stick. But why are you doing this, Stacy? Well, because you're, you may not like the lumpy bumpies and I wanna show you how to get rid of them. Now, if you can tell me how to get rid of them on the back of my eyes, oh, well, <laughs> I'll share with you. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to put my embossing powder right back into my jar. And take my Versamark, close it up and put it away. 
And many of you have Versamark or an embossing medium. And I'm going to heat again. This is called a double emboss. And you can emboss on top as many times as you would like. What it's going to give you is a more glossy, glassy look. Can you see it already? Can you see the difference? It's a more glossy, glassy, not so lumpy, not so bumpy look. So if lumpy bumpy isn't what you're looking for, easy to take care of it. And that's true anytime you're using embossing powder. You can double emboss anytime you're using embossing powder. You can triple emboss if you still don't have it as glossy and as shiny as you would like it. Let me do all of these. And then we'll see how we look. And if we want to come back and do it again. It just depends upon the look you are going for. So now these are much smoother than they were before. Much smoother than, than these. Big difference. And are they dry? Yes, they're dry. And if I wanted them even more glossy, could I do it again? Yes, I could do it again. Let's just do the bottom one. Versamark on it again. Clear embossing powder on it again. And I am just building that up. Now some of you will say, well, why don't you just use ultra thick? Well, one, a lot of people don't own ultra thick embossing powder. Two, because those ultra thick granules are so big, um, if I was doing something detailed and I wanted to make sure that I kept, I was building the layering on and I used ultra thick embossing powder, it may lose some of the edges and some of the detail of something that is um, a little more delicate. So I'm trying to not do that. I would rather layer my embossing powder so that I keep the, the edges straight and it doesn't bleh everywhere, kind of is more contained than just putting ultra thick on here and doing it once because the ultra thick will spread much more because the granules are much fatter. So now I am embossing three times over. And there comes a point where it really just looks like glass. Got a little bubble in there. Can I get the bubble out? I have to pick the bubble out and then reheat. But it really just looks like glass. So these are two, and that is three. And then I can die cut and do the same thing I did before. Put my squares on there and die cut away. But remember, I didn't use three different color embossing powders. I just used one. One with some clear. But before I got distracted, my, I distracted myself, I put this one together and I'm ready to do this one. And this time I think I might use the blue. Shall we try the blue? I don't know what the blue is going to look like. Can't be bad, right? It's blue. <laughs> Let's grab a piece of paper and make my little, make my little funnel out of it. 
Why am I not using the other funnel? Because it has Versamark all over it. And if I throw embossing powder down on top of it, it will all stick to my paper and that's a waste of good embossing powder. So let's take off my first one and I'm just gonna go blue straight. And I'm gonna let gravity do its thing and I'm just gonna let it walk on down. Give a little tap. If I wanna make sure I'm good, I can take it and kind of rub it in. And this is just double-sided tape, but not all double-sided tape is the same. Please remember that. Tap off my excess. and put it back in my jar. So you can see just how little you actually use, really. Then I'm gonna take my next one, open up my next little guy, and let's take off my second. And this time I'm gonna use my little scoopy, just put a little bit in there, Not even a whole scoop, and it's as pretty as mole scoop. I'm gonna drop it in there, and this time I'm gonna grab my Winter Wonderland because it's a totally different look, completely different look. Look at how fabulous it is. And I'm gonna get a, about an equal scoop. Put it in there. And then mix it all up. Gosh, I hope I have enough blue. We'll find out. Oh, I already took it off. Okay. Ooh, maybe I'll throw that little bit of blue in there too. And mix it all up. Put it across my top and walk it on down and let gravity do its thing. Well, you can already see it's going to be a different color, no question about that. Okay, what do I have left? That's what I've got left. Put it in my bowl. I'm gonna get just a little bit more blue because I don't have much left, but I don't want too much blue because I wanna try and get that lightest color. Just a little bit more blue. And then some more of my winter wonderland. Is that what it's, yeah, winter wonderland. Oh, it's pretty. Scoopies are nice, right? Can you, you can use them for your glitter? You can use them for just about anything. And stir, 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 stir. Does that look pretty light? We'll find out in just a minute. Take off my liner, expose my sticky, kind of go across the top, and then let it walk on down and fill all that space. Where it's sticky, the embossing powder is going to stick to. Well, we'll see if it was light enough. Time will tell. Okay, I did all three of them at once. And then let's put this back in my little jar. 
my little extra storage for the next time. So now I've got my yellow and I've got my blue. And I can just leave them in there until I'm ready to do them again because I've already got a starter going. Let's hit the heat tool and let's see what we've got. Full color, a mix, a little bit of a, a blue and a little bit of the winter wonderland and then much more winter wonderland. And let's see. So I probably could have done this pre YouTube class, but then I don't know that you would learn so much if all of a sudden you just pop it out and it's like, woo. I mean, I do have samples over there to show you, but I think it's better for you to see And we're just adding our heat. And you can see how closely I'm able to get to my paper with my Ranger heat tool. And you can see just how beautiful this blue is all on its own. This is from my floral collection. Um, Stampendous did some, ex uh, some exclusive embossing kits for us. And I don't know if they've released the floral one yet to everybody or if we still have it exclusively. So that's just straight. And here we have with one scoop. And once it starts to heat, it really doesn't take it very long. In fact, it's already heating this one just from the heat uh, coming off of it and generating off of it, radiating off of it. And I can see what hasn't been turned yet. Three different colors. But what if I ever so quickly did one more? What if I took that blue, full strength blue, and I reopened my, my jar, and I added a good half a scoop or more of my blue. That'll be enough. I think it is. Maybe a hair bit more. Just so that I have one that is also almost full strength with that winter wonderland in it. Let's see what happens. It's only paper. And some tape. And using my little scoopy, I can control how much I grab and what I use. And keeping it in my little jars helps me maintain the proportion in not using too much because I don't want to have so much left over. See if I made this dark enough. Okay. 
I don't know, time will tell. Put the rest back and I have such a little bit left over, but it's a great little starter for next time. And let's heat and see what we get. So the, the Winter Wonderland is completely different than the clear. It has a frosty look to it. It has a silver, slight silver glitter to it without it being too much. It's got that frost winter kiss. So as I'm heating and it's turning, oh, it's turning a beautiful blue. It's beautiful. They don't make this color. Ooh, out of there. This color isn't available just on its own. But you want a, a wintry blue. Oh, but this would be beautiful on hydrangea too. Oh, oh, this would be so, I love blue hydrangeas. Am I done? So pretty. So now we've got three dark, medium, light, all out of the same blue, still have a ton left, all with that winter kiss to it. That will then all, or you can have the full strength. <laughs> Depends upon what you want. All that will, or you could have four. Shucks, I could have four colors in there. Starting with the full blue to the winter um, dark blue to the medium blue to the lightest blue. And it was all done with, with just this and some fabulous little winter wonderland embossing powder from Stampendous to give it, but it looks totally different than the clear. Completely different look than the clear because this has got that sheen and that frost to it where this does not. Now, could I throw clear on top of this? Sure I could if I wanted to smooth it out and really give it that frosty look. Absolutely, I could then take my clear You need to be a little bit of a mad scientist. It's okay to get in there and play. When you start mixing and matching really is when you can appreciate what you've purchased and how much more it can do for you. Okay, so I put some clear on there. Might take more than one coat, but we'll see. So I've got some clear. You can see where it's sh kind of shiny. That's where there isn't any embossing powder. And where it's dull, that's where it is. And let's heat and see what we get. And like I said, it may take two coats because the Winter Wonderland's got a glitter to it. So it's got a texture to it. And the clear is going to maintain the color that was underneath. Okay, so there's one. Do we want it glossier? We can have it glossier. Some more Versamark. Some more clear. Where you see the doll is where the embossing powder is. And once you get going, it doesn't take long for it to turn at all. And when I say turn, I mean heat and go from a powder to a solid. 
this is changing very, very quickly. In fact, it's done. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's done. Your your call. You've got options. And you're using things you may already own. And then we pull our dies. And we've got these. Shall we use the strip? We can. So let's use that one here, and even though this is kind of a mishmash, we'll use that one there and this one here. Okay, let's pull our machine over. So I'm just going to use the strips. And I'm going to do that. that and that oh but it's on my do not cut page on well, my do not cut plate can't do that slide 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 <laughs> all right let's see what we get let's send them on through so all I want are strips but I wanted those strips to nest inside each other. Creaks and cracks are okay. I'm bringing it back because if you remember, I'm going through embossing powder, I'm going through Stacy tape, I'm going through paper. It's not an intricate die, so you don't need to have a precision base plate. Number one, let's see if I got through this one. Oh, I did, but I cemented it to the other. <laughs> oh, Stacy. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> I had that one underneath. I got it off though. <laughs> and then <laughs> my last one. So this and this and this and this I don't need right now. And here's my last one. And then I can leave those there and bring this over and just go zoop and they pick up. And I could have made these as long or as short as I wanted. I could have just done this one and this one and then stamped something on the center of it. I have options. Up to you what to do with them. Wait till you see what the girls did with them. They used them to make, to weave paper. I love the idea of being able to take something and mix it with something else that's just a very basic item. The kaleidoscope, this is a glittery, it's got a beautiful glitter sheen to it. It's beautiful, unlike the frost where you get that winter kiss to it. In fact, this one was done in the winter wonderland. It's got this beautiful, that didn't get it, we didn't heat it there. It's got this beautiful winter kiss to it, but the kaleidoscope has got a, um, the kaleidoscope's got a, a sparkly, just like it sounds, like a kaleidoscope. It's amazing. Let's do a quick kaleidoscope. 
So I'm just gonna go half and half right now. So I'm gonna take a scoop of this. And a scoop of Kaleidoscope. I don't know if you can see it in there. Can you see that it's all twinkling at you? It's really, it's winking at you. I promise it is. Put that in there and play Mad Scientist. And mix, 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 mix. Mix, 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 mix. Oh, be helpful if I had some Stacy tape on there, right? Put it down. Cut off my excess. Zoop. Zoop. Pull up my liner. Grab my little funnel. Go right across the top. Walk it down. Looks good. Can you, I don't, maybe you can even see it from there that it's got some glittery, glisteny happiness in there. Put that in there for use later. And just, just for the fun of it, let's do one at full strength. Just to say we did. So all the different embossing powders you've purchased over the years, where you wanted to layer your colors, you wanted to make flowers, you and but you only had one yellow or one pink or one red but the flowers were dimensional and you you could die cut out different layers of those flowers now with just a couple basic embossing powders you can take it and make it into something completely different let's just do this one full strength just for just to say we did See, and I can dump this one because it's all going to go right back in. Gosh, what a pretty color that is. Okay, good enough. Let's take this and pour this right back in. And then let's heat real quick. So I like the heated tool only because I don't burn anything. Again, a cylinder tool is going to be just fine. And if you've never seen heat embossing before, this is such an aha moment. When you're new and you've never done this before and you do it for the first time, you are just beside yourself because it makes everything look elegant. And it just adds that extra little oomph that you can't get. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Holy smokes, artichokes. Okay, I was talking, but then I got distracted by the glitter. Okay, I think that's, is that all turned? Nope, there's one spot in the middle. And I can tell when it's turning because it, it winks at you. The glitter actually moves and you can see it and it just is magnificent. Okay, now let's do this one really quick. And it won't take long to do. And as I see it turning, I'm moving my, I'm moving my heat tool. 
and I can see it creeping up and closing in. And now I got is that last little hole. Oh, and this one must have some. Oh, Stacy! Oh, I just stuck my finger in it. Ah! Uh. <laughs> You think I can get rid of that really quick? What do you think? Maybe? I stuck my finger right there. Didn't mean to. I was so excited. Nah, it's gonna darken the whole piece up. Nope, it darkened my color. Darn it. See, it darkened my color. Hmm. See if I can get some to stick it. Maybe I can just do the whole thing that color. Well, that was a bummer right there. But that tells you, okay, I made a mistake, but I'm going to go back and try and fix it. Don't know that I can. Don't know that I can't, but I'm gonna give it a whirl. Let's see if it melts. Now it's gonna be this super deep, deep color versus my super, super light color. Nope. I tried. Nope. It's gonna be a hodgepodge of color. I'm so sad. And I'm still sticking my finger in it. But let's get to the pretty one. <laughs> Can you see that? Ooh, that's with the kaleidoscope. Can you see why they call it kaleidoscope? Ooh, pretty. What if I, I just want to fix this one, but I can't. It's late, but I'm, I just need to fix it, but I won't. But look at how beautiful is that. Holy smokes. Now, if we took... So I need to put this one away. If we took our circle and we cut there and we cut there and we cut there, who says we can't make it better, right? Who says? Bring over my machine, cut that deep, deep, rich color there, and then a lighter color, and then that one. Same tone because it's the same, the same um, embossing powder. And then I could put this one on top if I wanted, or I could take this one You think it'll cut through both? I don't know. That's asking an awful lot of that dye. I don't know. Let's see. My guess is no. It's asking an awful lot for it to go through 
multiple layers of embossing powder, multiple layers of Stacy tape, and it's just a little die. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. If I go back and forth, and then maybe just rotate it a little bit, and go back and forth, and let's see if it did it. Little die. Okay, let's see what we got. Nope. I tried though. It wants to. <laughs> it did that one, that's for sure. Nope. It wanted to, but it didn't. Can't go through two layers. Aw. All right, well, we tried. It's just paper, but it's pretty. Colors are pretty. And I only used one color. And because I made a mess of it, I actually got multiple colors. Because I got it darker over here and lighter over there. And then I used the exact same color with the kaleidoscope to get the glittery over here. You have options. And it's using something again that might already be in your arsenal of crafting that you haven't pulled out for a while or you've kind of wished that you've had the opportunity to make those colors a little differently. Do you have to do it in strips? No. Could you do a big five inch piece? Absolutely, without question, no doubt about it, you could do a big five inch piece, inch piece and ombre your color down. Yes, and we, Doris put together, she did some, some swatches, like here's your yellows. And this one has a double emboss versus the single emboss. But look at the colors of the yellows, which are the ones I did. And look at the colors of the green. It started as one green, just one. And I played with the blues, although this blue is be Look at how gorgeous is this. That's one color embossing powder. That's one color embossing powder. Actually, I think that these, how pretty. You can do this and you may already be halfway there. You may already own a Versamark if you want to do a double emboss. You may already own some of the Stacy the kits, the ones that we've done exclusively, because um, that's what I was using today is the florals and here's the sparklies, which you can make even more sparkly or you can use the clear to, um, to grade, do the gradation of color, the pearlescence. You may already own those. You may already have a big clear one that you can start pulling out and playing with. I'll tell you, the winter is beautiful. The collect These are the three out of the seven that I love the most. It was the clear, not detailed clear, just clear, and the kaleidoscope and the winter wonderland. And what they did was amazing. So, okay, so I need to start showing you stuff because it's late. So, what do we have for you today? Okay, samples. First off, I did use my micro dots, my Simply Sticky micro dots. If you haven't bought these yet, they're wonderful. Everybody's raving about them. Thank you so much for your kind words. 10 sheets and and for intricate dyes, you'll, you'll never go back. You'll be in heaven once you own them. See, look at how pretty is that? Then we have my die set, my die set. Simply defined, it's con uh, I con concentric crafting. And the thing is, you can put these inside there and these inside there to make frames as well. You can, you can nest them into each other to make the frames like we did earlier. I made super cute little shapes just by nesting things inside of other things. You have options. So simply defined. It's not a simply defined release, but I wanted this set, so I made it. 
and it's $9.99 for the set. I know, crazy, right? So you get 27 dies. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, you get 27 dies. $9.99. <laughs> that even shocked me. Um, if you like a glitter cleanup cloth, it's very handy. I have it right here. I cut a swatch off of it. It's really very, 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 very big. It's huge. Um, and it just picks everything up. Glitter, embossing powder, whatever makes your heart happy. When it stops picking up your glitter, your embossing powder, um, little bits of things, then you just throw it away, which is why I cut a piece off of it because it is really large. I'll put these pieces, this piece away. It's actually two pieces. So there we go. So I cut straight across and fold that to make this little piece here. So I still have all of this left. I can still make three more of these from this. And then when it's all, when this stops cleaning, I just throw it away and I grab another one. It's, and it doesn't have, there's no smell to it, just so you know, it has no smell to it. So it's a glorified cheesecloth that has tack to it, I guess is the best way to describe it. Then we have the, well, I already showed you, we have three embossing kits that these work best with. These are the three that we have that um, were done for us by Stampendous. We've got Pearl Luster. We've got the uh, Floral Garden. And then we've got the Sparkly. So the Sparkly is nice because you can add the clear to your Sparkly to, to get your ombre or you could add the winter to your sparkly or if you uh, to get your ombre and if you add the kaleidoscope to your sparkly you're going to get an ombre with more sparkle so your choice <laughs> and then we have the three colors of the embossing powders that i've been playing with uh, i recommend them in full size you can in some of the kits that you have there are it's definitely not the winter wonderland but the other two, I believe, are in some of the other kits that we've carried. But here they are. We'll have this as an I want it all for you. And then the new storage that I have. There's just, I wish I had these for last week for all of your little, um, all your little shaker toppers. Because it just makes it easy. And then your little scoopy just goes right in there. And you just scoop them up and glitter and the little scoopies are my new best friend, I think. Makes my heart happy. And we have the three sizes. There's three sizes. My favorite two sizes are the two largest. And then the next one is this one. This one's a little small, but I brought it in anyway just because. But there's not a lot of room in there. So I happen to like these two the best. And those were the, this is the one that I was playing with today so that you don't lose any of your embossing powder and then you've got room to move it around. So new. And we didn't even use this at all, but I wanted you to know that we brought it in because a lot of people were asking for it, is your detailed glue bottle. You do have to put a little pin in there, you do. But it's a lovely little glue bottle. The girls have been playing with it for a while now. Works great. It's a fine line detailer. It comes empty. We filled it with stay put. Works like a works like a dream. And some of you asked, are the little embellishments from last week flat on the backside so you can glue them in place? You can. And here's the bottle that's gonna let you do that. So and it's not an expensive bottle. It really isn't. I, I, I think our price is pretty good on it. Same with the little the little scoopies. I think our price is fairly good on them. You get five in a pack. They're not like Oh, the packaging is amazing, Stacy, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter to you, right? Um, is that everything? So that and my dye and okay. So let me show you. Oh, the yeah, I showed you that and those. Okay, let me show you samples because we've got beautiful samples. How cute is this? Right? Just darling with all your little embossing going on. So super cute. And then here's the one I showed you earlier. And we've popped them out to really give you the feel of the ombre look on an embossing powder. 
and here I think Doris did this one she didn't use embossing powder at all she just wanted to show you how to use those circles without using embossing powder if you just wanted to use the circles this is paper not embossing powder if you just wanted to make a card using the circles and then look at this one see I don't know who this is if this is Claire or Elena they made the they made these into frames and then use the circle and then the square on top and the background is embossing powder this is all done out of one color of embossing powder and the closer you get you can see the differences in the colors of the embossing powder and then here's another simple card. Again, not using the embossing powders, but just the pretty circles. How lovely is that? And here, using the squares with the ombre. So light, dark, medium. And put them on the diagonal so they're a diamond. And how pretty is that? easy to do and if you have double-sided tape stacy tape suk wang tape elizabeth craft tape you too will be able to do this and no fuss no muss if you don't have tape and you want to use versamark absolutely you can the tape just makes it easier now i told you that they took the strips and they wove with it so because my dies have no cut ends, the edges have no cuts, you can make a strip of paper as long as you want. And that is what they did. And then they wove with it. And here is Claire using the squares and the embossing powder. And I love the next one because they just got into mixing and playing with the embossing powder. How cute is that? Using the squares and the circles. And it's all embossed. And I'm sure this one was using our floral. And this one down there has got kaleidoscope going on. so pretty then we move over here right beautiful and for a guy how perfect is this And because you're able to adjust the colors of the embossing powder, you're not left with just red. You're not left with just a, 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 a chocolate brown or an espresso brown. You've got options. And here, just using the squares on a card. Now the butterflies have been embossed. <laughs> but just using the squares. And here, put a panel on the front and popped. And how cute is that? Simple, easy, clean, classic. And another weaving using the strips. This background was using strips from using my dies and then they wove them just like a basket weave together and how beautiful is that the girls did a wonderful job embracing my three in the morning huh But it makes you grow. It stretches you. It makes you think, hmm, what else can I do? 
I don't know, what else can you do? Pushes you out of whatever box you think you may be in. Using the strips, the square C, perfect A2. Perfect A2 card. Just using the strips, the circles, and the squares. Weaving again. And then Claire told me to slide it this way. And then, so we've got squares and circles. Oh, to open. So uh, look at how cute is this? Darling. So cute. Nope, it's gotta go this way, this way, that way. Now that's gotta go this way, this way, this way, that way. Oh, Claire. Okay, it was darling when I opened it up. <laughs> I know I can figure out how to put it down, put it back together again, but that's for another moment. <laughs> and then last but not least, Claire put together the cutest little mini album. Just you, look at, they make the little on top of the tag. Those are my circles and embossing powder. Isn't this beautiful? And here, ombre the embossing powder all the way down. And she put that in there. And her little papers. And there. Oh, she did such a beautiful job. And again with the squares for your tags and then you turn it around and you've got a whole nother view this is Claire all right it's way late going on two hours late oh my gosh okay where do you find all this great product well, the Simply Defined you're only going to find here. Hopefully, maybe some of your local stores have opened up and you can get embossing powder through them. If not, we're here and we would love to have your business. But if, again, if you've got a local independent who was able to reopen, shop them first. Stacy Tape, absolutely. Um, the storage, super cute, really, and affordable. And the little glue bottle, awesome. Okay. It made my heart happy. It really did. I hope you learned something today. I hope it was entertaining. I hope we had a wonderful time together. And oh my gosh, it's an hour and 50 minutes long. Holy smokes, artichokes. Hopefully some of you are still with me. <laughs> and if not, oh well, it's good. Good to see you when I saw you. Okay, me, Stacy, Scrapbooking Made Simple, Scrapbooking Made Simple.com. Trying to get back to normal. Wahoo kachoo. See you next time. See you next week. Next Saturday. What's next Saturday? Next Saturday is the launch. No, what's next Saturday? I don't know, but I'm sure it's fabulous. My brain is not thinking. It'll be amazing. Trust me. <laughs> oh, it is. It is amazing. It's new from Marabou. Worldwide launch right here. It is amazing. I will see you next Saturday. Bye, everybody. <laughs>